put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood Game Review. With Desmond and the others arriving at their destination, which I won't give away because it's slightly clever, Yet again, Desmond delves into the memories of Ezio, and this time they're, you know, out to find the piece of Eden, the apple. And so Ezio gets a bit of closure in his story, which he really was left quite a lot without in the end of the second one, or at least that's how I see it. From the epic beginning to the epic ending, there's also quite a bit of epic going around, uh, you know, throughout the adventure, such as when you destroy the war machines of Da Vinci. You know, in the second game, you got a couple of his inventions and you know, you use them for your own benefit, and now he's hired by the Borgia. So, yeah, he's made them some... I'm, I'm not gonna give away what they are, but they're vehicles of different sorts. And, yeah, you have to destroy him to, you know, help fend off the Borgia. Technically, I'm not sure you're supposed to, or that you have to destroy them, but they're like, you know, the various sub-quests, so, yeah. I definitely recommend them because they're a ton of fun and they provide some really nice variety to the game. I do not intend to go into great detail about all the stuff that is essentially the same as in the second game because I did a review of the second game. Basically, the graphics, still quite good, you know, great. The eye movement and the faces can be a tiny bit off, especially the faces do get a little bit rubbery on occasion, but on the whole, very natural and they really, they're very expressive, you know. The gameplay continues to be, it's fun, but a lot of the way it's kind of easy and you don't feel that much tension. The, you know, you can continue to hire thieves to you know, distract guards away from where they're standing, prostitutes to basically be walking, you know, covers, blend-ins, kind of, and mercenaries to help you fight. I believe that's everything that is literally the exact same. Or at least, you know, you can still buy stuff in stores and such. But yeah, so, but yeah. Part of the reason I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about that also is there's a lot to talk about with this game. So, yeah. The gameplay, they have actually, you know, they continue to teeter-totter. They continue to sort of walk this balance of not quite being willing to be challenging. And, you know, at the same time, you know, doing some stuff to keep it, you know. Right from the first of these games, there are things that are challenging, but a lot of the way... You know, a lot of what you do, there's not a lot of consequence because you can always just run away or hide or kill the guards you attract, you know. For the whole Grand Theft Auto thing, with, you know, if you do something wrong, there's going to be guards, you know, there's going to be people out there to kill you. In Grand Theft Auto, that actually matters because they keep coming and they get bigger and, you know, eventually there's going to be a tank on your ass. And, yeah, you know, good luck. In this, in these games, you can always just fight them off. But, with this one, they actually do gravitate towards 
a bit of challenge. So I'd say 60% of this game is actually challenging, whereas before it was on a good day 50, on most days 40. But yeah, so we have actual... One thing I really like that they did with this game, I think they sort of started it in the second, but in this they actually do it properly. They, they really do it. You don't just, you know, some of the stuff you have to climb, you actually have to put effort into it. You actually have to figure out how to climb it. You're not just running directly up a building anymore. Not always, at least. On, you know, the, the rooftops and such, yeah, that's still the case. But otherwise, you know, in this game, you actually have to figure out, okay, well, where do I jump from to get there? You know, you actually have to put a little bit of effort into it, so it's more like Prince of Persia and less like Assassin's Creed 1 and 2. That is excellent. In this, you know, it starts pretty much where the second one left off, you know, not a ton has happened. Now, the Borgia are making, you know, a bit of a counter-attack, and yeah, you have more people to kill. <laughs> so, this is sort of closure to the story of Ezio, you know, I can see how they could make a game after it, certainly, as they have. I haven't played Revelations yet. I do own it. I'll get to it. However, it does, you know, more properly close off the story, more, you know, it, yeah, it provides closure, which the second one really didn't quite accomplish. This one does, you know, it does expect you to know what happened in the second game, and it does follow up from the second game. So if you played the second one and loved it, this is a really good, you know, continuation of that. Now, Rome is pretty much entirely under Borgia control now, so you you have to help, you know, this one you really, you're a freedom fighter this time, you know, you're not just an assassin, or just, you're not only an assassin, you're also a freedom fighter. You are out to, you know, tear the yoke off the common man and, you know, fight the Borgia off from their backs. So, you, there are these Borgia Towers, which prevent you from uh, restoring Roman, you know, the various stores. And the a cool thing is, the more stores you restore, the more, you know, it, it gets you a discount at the different stores, you know. And I'm sure that actually makes sense. I'm not good with the whole market thing, but yeah. Anyway, that, and you can also buy you know, famous buildings from them, and that will also, you know, it'll heighten the value of, you know, and I think earn you more money as well, so. And yeah, in this one, you know, you again earn money, you know, I think it's every 20 minutes, and the more you have, the more you'll earn, like in the second one. Anyway, the towers, yeah, they prevent you from, you know, I guess, no, it, it doesn't matter. Anyway, they prevent you from restoring build, re restoring the various buildings and, sh and shops. So anyway, you have to find the captain of the tower, kill the captain, and set the tower on fire, and then you, you know, can actually start, you know, restoring the s shops in that area. So, and you have to do this for all of Rome, and it'll, you know, have, like, a counter, count, you know, counting up the percentages of how much you've restored of that particular area. You are, this time, limited to Rome, and that is, you know, worth noting for anyone, you know, out to play these games. This one has the fewest cities of, you know, these first three, definitely. You know, in both, both the first and the second, you had several cities that you went back and forth between. This one is only Rome, so, you know. That's not a bad thing, but that is how it is. The... This time... I'm, I'm not sure this was in the second, at least I don't remember it. This time, as you go, the... You know, as you complete missions that you've gotten from the prostitutes, thieves, and mercenaries, you know, each gives you a specific mission that is typical to their... You know, that's... that's Sorry, not the missions, the 
challenges, you know, they want you to do a certain kind of thing so and so many times. And as you do more and more of that, they will get better and better, sort of, at what they do. So, you know, the thief, the thieves, eventually, if you run through a group of, I think they're called, like, dissidents or something, you know, they will literally pull a guard straight off his horse, you know, and the prostitutes, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I've seen several examples of this, will actually start poisoning guards. That is badass. You know, they will literally, and you're not even telling them to do that, you're just, you know, Basically, the prostitutes, either you send them to go with that guard, or you pass the guard, and the guard will say, oh, hey, look over here, you know, he'll take over the prostitute, and it'll, you know, say, and after a little while, she'll go off with him and poison him. That's pretty cool. Yes, again, you are, you know, solving, you're doing missions for the various ones, and, you know, the thieves you'll race, although this time you don't, physically race them, you're just, it just says the time you have to beat, and you just have to run through, I don't know, I, I just think it loses a little something, but, yeah. The prostitutes, you might have to beat someone up, you might have to kill someone, and the mercenaries, I believe those are all kill missions. I think they're the ones who assign you, what's it called, hits, you know. Now, this being called Brotherhood, there are two things that are definitely worth talking about with this that, you know, lends it its title. The multiplayer, which I will get to in a little bit, and the fact that you actually do have fellow assassins in this one. You know, I guess they just at some point stopped and thought about, hey, Ezio isn't the only assassin. You know, he. Th th this is supposed to be like a you know, this is not just a father and son thing, this is a real, like, a group, so why doesn't he recruit? And in this one, he does. You know, each time you knock down a Borgia Tower, you know, there will be a couple of recruits nearby fighting off some guards, and if you kill the guards, yeah, basically, you, you know, you can recruit that one, that person, and I believe it's a total of 12 assassin recruits, and you can send them on missions, and you can call them to your aid, and both of these things will grant them experience points, and, you know, you can upgrade, I think it's their armor and their weaponry over the course of, you know, them being upgraded, once they're fully upgraded, they will be fully, you know, equipped assassins, they will actually have the same weaponry as you, which, you know, they get the what's it called, the crossbow, just as soon as you do that. I don't know, maybe it's an ego thing, I just wish I had it for a little bit longer. But yeah, you finally get a crossbow in this one, and they make it work. It's still challenging, you know. Anyway, yeah, you can actually literally call assassins to your aid. Even on missions, you know, sometimes you can't. There are places where you obviously can't, like... I don't think you can call them to you if you're deep within enemy territory and it's like, or if you, you know, and it's somewhere where they couldn't get to you. Or if you're on a mission where you cannot get spotted at all, then it will also, you know, such as when you're destroying the war machines. No, you cannot. One thing I think I might have forgotten to mention with the war machines, you actually use the war machine against them. That's why it's so badass, you know, you're not just destroying nice big... Anachronistic weapon, slightly at least, you are actually using it against them. You know, there's one bit where Ezio actually gets into one of them and says, let's see if you can bite your master's hand. You know, that pretty well sums it up. That's very awesome. And of course he ends up destroying it afterwards, because yeah, it is, you know, it would really be far too effective for it to at least fall on the Borges' hand. So anyway... Yeah, there are some places where you can't have them come at you, but plenty of places you can actually use them. And I don't know how they quite how they did this. It might have must have taken a lot of effort, but they actually managed to still make the game, you know, nice and challenging. I mean, obviously, it's also entirely up to you how often you use them. Such as you know, same as with the thieves and the mercenaries and the prostitutes. So. You know, it depends, largely depends on you how much easier it gets or how much more difficult it, 
get so, yeah, but, you know, they don't actually, you know, they're very, very fun to use, and they never completely take away the tension, you know, this is actually, this is the most, I already said that, but this is the most challenging game thus far of these first three, and somehow it is even with the, you know, the assassins that you can call. Also, once you have enough assassins, there are these three bars, and each bar is, I think, one to three assassins, depending on which of the bars it is that you call by using that bar. And when you have all three bars fully filled up, and it'll, you know, it'll refill over time, so that's, you know, again, that's how they make that sort of thing work. So it isn't excessively easy. You actually do have to think about, do I want to use it here, or do I want to wait and see if there are even worse adversaries around the corner, you know, and how many of them are, am I going to use? So, yeah, all that good stuff. And they, yeah, they actually, they'll use the smoke bomb, they'll use the crossbow, they'll use the pistol, they'll use the blades, you know, the whole nine yards. And you actually get to, you know, when they reach the level of assassin, you actually get to bring them into the Brotherhood in this cool little cutscene. The... but yes, so when you have all three, you can also call in a hail of arrows, which will kill every guard that you can currently see, you know, every guard in the vicinity, something like that. And again, you know, this is, it's really cool, but you can also only use it every so often, you know. So, yeah, great stuff for that. The characters, you know, are interesting, fun to watch. I think this introduces at least a couple of new ones, and it does follow up on ones that we saw in the second game. And, you know, there are so many nice and diverse ones that... I think pretty much everyone will find someone to get some, you know, enjoyment out of watching. The... I suppose that more... Well, that. The multiplayer, of course. Basically, you know, I could spend a ton of time talking about the rules, but really what it boils down to is a very unique kind of playing multiplayer. Basically, everyone, every player is an assassin and or a victim of assassins. Regardless of the rule set you're playing with, and there are like seven, it's a nice varied amount, you have to hide from the enemy assassins whilst, you know, discovering them and killing them excuse me, in time, you know, before they find kill you, and you, you know, you have to actually, well, yeah, you know, you have to actually properly hide from them. You can do what, you know, s several of the things you can do in single player, you can actually run directly up a building, but you think that's going to help you, you know, blend in? Probably not, so, you know, use it for, like, escaping the other or hunting the other. And part of what is, is quite clever, I think there's, like, two dozen different models for choosing, and all of them are abst Abstergo agents, you know, you're, in multiplayer, you're actually an Abstergo agent practicing to use the memory technology, something like that. And, you know, several of these you actually kill in the single player also, as, you know, Templar agents or something. Anyway, the... But, but yes, so... Because there are these... Maybe it's a dozen and a half different models. There will be several in the... Because that's, you know, part of the thing. It still is populated by AI. And the AI look, use these same models, so you might be looking at someone thinking, is this an AI or is this one of my enemies? You know, you'll never wonder who your allies are because they have, you know, the, well, it's always clear, you know, they have their name above them or something like that. You know, similar to other video games, not important. The, 
but but yes, you actually you know have to sort of figure out is this really you know and sometimes you might kill the wrong person. You might kill an uh, you know an AI civilian instead of your intended target, and that will you know make it clear who you are. So you might get backstabbed right after you do that. You know by someone who is trying to root you out. You know now some of the time you are only a victim or only an assassin. You know the straight out victims cannot kill assassins though they can do this you know if if they haven't been identified and they they take the assassin by surprise they can stun them which is essentially the same you know it slows the other one down and you know you have you don't really have the wrist blade but it's essentially the same you know and this is actually quite nice all of the different models have different weapons and different ways of killing. So, you know, one of them runs around with a stiletto. One of them has a sword in his cane, I think, you know. Various things. All of them can kill, you know, with that. And as you progress through the levels, you know, leveling up, you know, you gain XP and you level up, you will get more different weapons and space for carrying more, so, you know, you will work your way up to a smoke bomb or the pistol and things like that, and you can use those, but there is, you know, each time you use them, there's going to be a countdown before you can use it again, so you want to make sure you hit, you know, you want to make sure it counts. A couple of them have specific different rules from, you know, varying a bit from what I've just said, with, for example, the victims or the ones who aren't assassins have to find these chests and, you know, rob them, and the assassins have to, you know, kill the victims before they manage to steal from these chests. And then there are there's this one called Escort, I think, where it isn't the assassin you're out to kill. You know, both teams are assassins, basically, and one of the teams has to protect these VIPs, and the other team has to kill the VIPs. You know, you're, you get more money for killing the VIP than for the assassin. I think that more or less covers that. And then, you know, there's, of course, you know, the free-for-all kind of mode where it's, you know, where there aren't teams, and then there are ones where there are teams, and you know, stuff like that. But, yeah, that basically covers it, and it's actually a lot more tense than the single player, you know, because, you know, the other players really will, you know, you literally can die in a matter of seconds. You will not always be able to see your opponent before they kill you, you know. there There is no fencing, you know, it's all just... Instant death, really. And chasing. A pretty good amount of chasing. And there's a nice amount of maps. I think there's maybe ten different maps. And, you know, varying times of day. And very nicely varied locations, you know. Now, that, I believe, covers everything in the game. If there's anything you feel I didn't cover, or any questions you have, you know, feel free to post them down below. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.